The human voice is the original instrument. It doesn't require heavy cases or calloused fingers, but requires special attention and care, as it acts as one of the only means of communication for most, as well as performance. In this video, we'll cover the developing child's voice and the things involved with teaching vocal music to children in a classroom setting. Right off the bat, there are five categories, not age-specific, that children go through when developing their voice. Babbling is the first of these five, which is children trying to make music in response to a stimulus. The stimulus could be anything from a parent, to a TV show, or even a song on the radio. When the child is able to carry a tune with a wider vocal range and sometimes lyrics, we call this a learned song. Now this doesn't mean that all the pitches are correct, but you should be able to get the gist of what the child is singing, as well as keep a steady beat. The next two are directly related to learned song, spontaneous song and potpourri song. A spontaneous song is made up on the spot or can be a known melody with brand new lyrics. How can you tell? While the flow of the piece may become rigid, along with a melody that bounces around without coming back to a main theme, repetition of the same words, and there's usually no rhyming in this song. Think of Buddy the Elf from the Christmas classic Elf. The child may also be wandering around aimlessly or performing the activity they are singing about. Potpourri song is the conglomeration of two or more songs, usually unintentionally. Ba ba black sheep EFG, how I wonder what you are. Because the three songs I used have the same melody, it's easy for them to get them confused with one another, at least in the mind of a child. This happens to adults too. Many popular songs follow the same chord structures. I know I've gotten Under Pressure and Ice Ice Baby confused more than once. The last stage is known as formal song. At this point, the child is aware of technique, can sing complex intervals and rhythms, is able to modulate, and can sing with placing breaths properly. They don't have to be a professional or a prodigy, but is much more advanced than that of the learned song category. The important thing to remember about the developing voice is as the children age, their vocal ranges expand and their tessitores get smaller during the age of rapid physical development. Children may be more self-conscious of themselves as they grow older, pressured by students' prideful attitude and gender intimidation. To some, music is just not cool anymore. During this time, it's always important to encourage children and provide a number of activities and broad repertoire to keep students engaged and interested in music. Proper training of a child's voice takes time and careful instruction. This is why the use of a knowledgeable vocal model is important. A model can be anyone who can perform vocal music at the formal stage, but is usually a teacher in a classroom setting. In order for a child to clearly listen and perceive what the child wants them to hear, the vocal model should sing in the range of that of a child's, using no vibrato. If it is a male teacher, he should sing in his falsetto voice, as the children can't match the lower range of an adult male. Sure, the teacher could just use a recording in place of this model. However, you can't change the tempo or range according to the child's needs and you can't see the physical aspects of the model. The model should also be enthusiastic and use facials to reflect the piece, as well as proper singing posture and breath support to reflect on their students. Try this out. When you think of posture, think of yourself as a marionette with attached strings. So collapse. Try breathing in and singing any note. Hard, isn't it? Let's fix that posture. Make sure your feet are shoulder length apart and keep your weight on the balls of your feet. You should be able to bounce up and down. Have the string connected to your spine lift so you are upward. Pull the string from your head with your hand and lift so you aren't slouching and your chin is up. Now slightly raise your chest and shrug your shoulders so you're tense and then release. Your shoulders should be slightly back and down, hands relaxed at your sides. And that's all. Now take a breath using your diaphragm located just under the lungs and sing that note again. Isn't it much better? Proper posture is necessary to not only look professional, but have proper breath support in your singing. Using breath in music is similar to that in high endurance sports, like basketball or track. You need to learn how to properly breathe in order to make it through a 20 minute piece without passing out. Using breathing exercises, like thinking of yourself as a balloon, or breathing in, holding, and exerting breath, can help children really understand and build stamina for performing music. The role of the educator is crucial to performing vocal music, as is their multitasking skills. 
Their direction is needed for pitches, phrases, melody contour, rhythm, text, and organization, all while being direct and patient towards all of their students. When singing, the teacher should use cues to bring in students, allowing time for them to prepare and breathe properly for singing. Catching students off guard is no way to run a rehearsal. Keeping the tempo and pitch is also crucial for students to build up and eventually sing accurately when the concert rolls around. There are two different ways that a teacher can teach this type of music. As we mentioned in our last video, teaching by rote means that the songs are transferred orally, learning chunks of a song progressively until they are accurate. Teachers may use mapping, hand signs, or pitch matching for the children to better understand the material. On the other hand, many of us are used to teaching by note, involving the child's ability to read music. This usually comes in the later years, which is why choirs don't start in most schools until third or fourth grade, in addition to the physical voice development and maturity of the students. Speaking of which, choirs are extremely beneficial to a child's musical development, as well as fun. From the teaching standpoint, it is important to select age-appropriate repertoire, making sure the songs aren't too babyish, yet not too difficult in style and vocal range. Rehearsals should occur at least once a week, beginning with warm-ups and vocal exercises, and working on each piece for a maximum of seven minutes. Because really, what eight-year-old wants to sing the same song for a half hour? Their attention span simply won't allow for it. With choirs, students are driven to perform well, practice responsibility, and stay on task toward the end goal in mind. Think of Troy and Gabriella in High School Musical, working diligently in order to get to the parts in the musical. A child's final goal would be a concert, performing in front of students, teachers, and parents. The final topic of teaching vocal music is the assessment of a child's singing. A child's singing grows through the effort it takes to have musical accuracy, physical quality, and expression based on understanding the piece. A formative evaluation takes a look at how the students are progressing on a constant basis in a classroom with feedback. The teacher may ask if the singing was in tune, in time, relaxed or tight, and expressive, leading the child into thoughtful reflection. Summative evaluation focuses more on taking a benchmark or previous point in time as a starting point and watching over a longer period of time, then looking back to see what they've improved upon. Because a good amount of eight-year-olds have cell phones today, Parents and teachers can record children singing or playing at different points in time and see the progress they've made musically, critiquing themselves and becoming a better vocalist overall. The voice is everyone's first instrument. Proper development of such can lead to better diction, speech, and range of a child's voice, along with the confidence to perform music to their highest potential. Children find joy in using their own voice to create beautiful music. Without developing these proper techniques, and allowing the opportunities for children to use their voice, many children would be at a huge musical loss. Until next time.